How are we doing tonight, everybody? Yeah. Doing good. My name is Carson Tuttle, and I'm really excited to share my story with all of you. I was thinking about this theme a lot about the one that got away, and I was trying to dissect that phrase and really think about, okay, what is all the emotional meaning of that, the one that got away? I thought it could be about nostalgia or regret. It could be about romance or fishing. <laughs> and I don't fish, so that was out right away. Um, I was trying to think about what it really means to lose something. Because the one that got away doesn't necessarily mean that you just couldn't get it or you couldn't attain it. The one that got away often means it's something that you had and something that you had in your possession and then you lost it in some way. It's almost like that Joni Mitchell song, you know, you don't know what you got until it's gone. And so I was trying to think of experiences and places that really match that thought of you don't know what you got until it's gone. And I immediately thought of college. For me, that was college. It was this place and these experiences that I had, and then all of a sudden they were gone. And I think a lot of young adults get done with college and they have that same experience, right? Where they go through all of these things and all of a sudden it's over. And it's really strange because for so long, we spend our whole lives when we're children and in adolescence looking forward to college, right? It's gonna be this big thing. I would look forward to college like I would dream of being Han Solo someday, right? <laughs> That one day I would just get in that spaceship with my best Wookiee friend and I would just fly off and have adventures. That's what college was going to be to me. And then all of a sudden it's over. You're grounded, right? And all you have left is to think about those experiences and you get flung into this adult world where it's, you know, loans and interviews <laughs> and more loans and dealing with relationships and even more loans, right? There's so many loans to deal with. And it makes you feel like you're Han Solo, but you're frozen in carbonite in Jabba the Hutt's palace. And you're just waiting for Luke Skywalker to save you at some point. And it made me think about my college experiences and what I really missed about it. And my college experience was very surreal and strange. Uh, I would describe it as unorthodox. But actually, in every sense of the word, it was orthodox. And what I mean by that is, I went to a very small, very conservative Christian college. Thank you, thank you, yes. I tell people that, and they never get excited about it. Actually, when I tell people I went to a Christian college, they get confused and scared a little bit. They're like, is, is he one of those Mormons we've been reading about? He must be one of those. Um, I'm not. Uh, I went to a Christian college, and people ask me questions about going to a Christian college, and the first question they always ask is, why? <laughs> like, why would you do that? <laughs> and they would always ask me why I would do that, and I would never have a good answer for them. I just started making up answers at some point just to see how they would react. I would tell them, well, I chose to go to a Christian college because when I was 18 years old, I was still a virgin. And I thought, well, let's see how long we can keep this going, right? <laughs> I'm not one to break a streak, okay? You got a pitcher on the mound, he's throwing a no-hitter, you leave him in the game. That's just good management. <laughs> they would always ask me, why did you go to a Christian college? And really, my reasons for going weren't any different than any other college student. I wanted to be an educator, and they had a good education program. I had a lot of friends that were going there. My sister was a student there. Before me, you tell people you go to a Christian college and they're looking for like a conversion story, like you were Paul on the way to Damascus, and there was no light from heaven, Jesus didn't talk to me, I just chose to go to a school. <laughs> That's really what it was. But going to a Christian college was a really strange experience because there's a lot of rules and regulations that you have to abide by in order to stay in school. Our student conduct policy was extensive, and many would say it was restrictive. Uh, for example, one of our rules in our student handbook was that students couldn't go dancing. Students couldn't go to dance parties. Uh, what does that sound like to you? Footloose, right? It's the time to come from Footloose. That's where I went to college. 
and there was no Kevin Bacon to save us. And we could have used him because it was really boring sometimes. They said we couldn't go dancing, and I had this I had this experience where my social club at York. I went to York College, by the way. I don't know if you mentioned, I mentioned that. York College in York, Nebraska. Some of you are thinking right now, I didn't know York had a college. <laughs> Others of you are thinking, what is York, Nebraska? Uh, but my social club there one time, we put on a dance party for new freshmen coming into our school and welcome to the school. And it was at this picnic shelter in a park in York. And a grand total of 27 people showed up, which for us was pretty good. And we were like, yeah, we did it. Um, <laughs> The next day, our dean of students sat down with a friend of mine who was the president of our club and told him that if we tried to do that again, our club was going to be suspended and he would be put on academic probation. So they took this seriously. But I always thought that was weird because the theater department at our school would put on musicals every year where you'd have people on stage singing and dancing. And I was like, wait a minute, why is that okay? for them to be dancing on stage, but we can't go dancing on our own. I don't understand that. And I asked a professor at our school that question one time, and they told me, well, when the theater department does it, it's not dancing. It's choreography. <laughs> so it's okay. Like they found a loophole with God or something. Like God hates the wedding reception dance, but he loves the sound of music. <laughs> As if God's up in heaven with his lightning bolts, saying, oh, I hope they plan this dancing in advance, right? <laughs> hope they have rehearsals to get the rhythm and beat down. And that was a real thing, that we couldn't go dancing. Another real thing, and this may shock some of you, but students couldn't drink alcohol at all. It didn't matter if you were over 21, under 21, on campus, off campus, it didn't matter. If you were seen drinking, that was against school rules which seems crazy, but I learned something through that, and that's if you take a group of college students that want to drink, that are also Christians, they will all come up with the same excuse for why they should be allowed to drink, which is, well, Jesus turned water into wine, so, mm. Yeah, I'm not a biblical expert, but I don't think that was the point of that miracle. I don't think Jesus participated in a BYOB 2,000 years ago, just so you could get wasted whenever you want. I don't know, I'm not against drinking, and I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Uh, I don't know why the kids at my school were using a miracle of Christ to like justify their bad behavior, though. It seemed off to me. Uh, like, and of all the miracles they were clinging onto, it was the water into wine one they mentioned all the time. Like, Jesus made the blind see again, he made the paralyzed walk again, he fed 5,000 people with like a box of Ritz Fitz crackers or something. <laughs> and what was their favorite miracle? The one with the Moscato, that one was their favorite. <laughs> and so, this is a message to all Christian college kids who enjoy drinking, stop using Jesus to justify it, he turned water into wine, he didn't turn water into jello shots, okay? <laughs> Please know the difference. Guys couldn't go, the guys at our school couldn't go into the girls' dorms, and the girls couldn't go into the guys' dorms, which was very dead poet society. Like, I expected there to be a lake in the middle of campus, and the girls had to be on one side, and the guys had to be on the other. Um, but one thing that that caused, that girls couldn't go into guys' dorms and vice versa, is the town of York, Nebraska right now, is just filled with cars roaming the streets late at night looking for a place to make out. Like, all over the place. Like, the town is filled with parking lots of sexually re repressed college students. Like, really bad. And I promise you that the York Police Department uses about 80% of their time tapping on steamy windows. Asking them what they're doing, kids. And it was so bad that one time I was willing, this is true, I was willing to drive through a snowstorm, through six inches of snow down a country road, uh, just to have alone time with my girlfriend, and my car got stuck in a snowdrift, and I had to call my friends and tell them why my car got stuck in a snowdrift. And when I told them that, I got off the phone, we were waiting for them to get there to push us out of the snow. Uh, my first thought actually was, well, at least we get some time alone here for a little bit, which didn't happen on campus ever. Um, and we complained all the time. 
We complained all the time about these rules, how restrictive they were, how we felt like our youth was being taken away from us. We complained about it. But honestly, when I think back on my college experience, uh, that's not the things I remember. That's not the things I look fondly on. The things I look fondly on are when I got to sing It Is Well With My Soul with 500 other college students at chapel. I think about the times where me and my friends would sneak in the backyards of townies at York just so we could take a look at the treehouse. Uh, I think about uh, our friend whose name was Sam, whose mother died in his home country of Kenya, and that whole campus uh, really rallied around him and raised thousands of dollars so he could fly home and take care of his mother. I remember long walks around York, Nebraska with my roommates and the fireflies in August, and I remember going to the same people when I was heartbroken or I was scared and we would hug each other and we would pray together. And I think the Joni Mitchell song was right, uh, that you really don't know what you got until it's gone. Thank you.